Just when you thought it was safe to go outside, climate change's new normal is hellish, literally. Dr. Michael Mann drops by to discuss why the 2021 forest fire season could be worse than last year. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Hey, let's have some fun. It's science. It's, uh, it's also, you know, the middle of spring, I guess early on in spring, but we're heading towards summer, and summer, at least here on the West Coast, is fire season increasingly. Last year, we had a week or so where uh, even in our house, as, as buttoned up as we could make it with two air filters running full time, uh, Louise and I were in pain, could not breathe. Uh, it's just like, what is going on? So I thought, well, let's ask one of the world's most prominent climate scientists about that. He, he happens to be a, a good guy and a friend and, and uh, you know, a friend of our program. Dr. Michael Mann, the distinguished professor of meteorology, the director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State University, member of the National Academy of Sciences, recipient of the Tyler Prize, the author of numerous books, including his most recent, The Madhouse Effect, uh, oh, his most recent is The New Climate Wars. Uh, Michael Mann with two N's.net is his website, and you can tweet him at Michael E. Mann with two N's. Dr. Mann, welcome back. What is going on with the West Mega Drought? First of all, what is, the, what is a me Mega Drought, and what is the situation in the West? And welcome back. Yeah, it's good to, yeah thanks. It's good to be uh, with you, my friend. And, you know, we are going into summer now. We're seeing... Uh, the, that same sort of onslaught of extreme weather events that we've come now to expect every summer. And the West Coast, of course, California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, uh, last year uh, had an epic wildfire season. And in fact, California, to some extent, we don't even refer to it as having a, a fire season anymore because you can see uh, major wildfires now break out any time of the year. And in fact, some of the worst wildfires have happened in December. So there is now a perpetual mm. fire season as California gets drier, um, as it gets warmer. And it's not rocket science. You, you take drought, you take heat, you put them together, you get these epic wildfires like we've seen uh, here in the United States in the western U.S. Uh, or a year ago when I was on sabbatical in Sydney, and bushfires were literally blanketing the entire continent of Australia. Uh, this is the face of climate change. It's not distant. It's not off in our future. Uh, it's here, and it's now, and it's impacting us today. Now, we know that there have been, uh, throughout known human history, you know, in the last 10, 20,000 years, uh, or, or I really, I'd say 10 or fewer thousand years, but in any case, we, we know that there have been periods of sustained drought. We've found uh, abandoned cities in the Pacific, uh, or excuse me, in the southwestern of the United States, for example, that go back before Columbus, where there was apparently a big drought eight, nine hundred years ago, and, and it just wiped out some uh, smaller uh, civilizations or tribes, communities. Um, how... how how does that play into this? That's the excuse that's always thrown out by the climate deniers. Oh, yeah, they, you know, we've always had these kind of things going on. How does that play into this? Or is this completely disconnected from the phenomena that produced that? I mean, what, what, how do we differentiate? And, and, and talk about scale here, please. Yeah, and, and, and there is a connection. I mean, there, there are uh, sort of natural events uh, in the past where we have seen extreme uh, you know, uh, weather uh, associated with natural climate variability. Uh, about a thousand years ago, the, the western U.S. was fairly dry. We think the tropical Pacific was sort of in, stuck almost in the La Nina state. You have El Nino events and you have La Nina events. El Nino years are often very wet years for large parts of California. La Nina years are often the opposite, uh, drier in the western U.S. And we think that conditions about a thousand years ago we're sort of stuck almost in that La Nina state, which does lead to drier conditions in the West. Here today, we've got a double whammy. Um, we've got, uh, and, and let's provide some perspective. Yes, there were natural droughts in the past. A uh, mega drought uh, is just a very large extended drought. And there was a mega drought in the Western U.S. Uh, about a thousand years. But the tree ring experts who reconstruct past uh, drought events and can compare them with today have found that the drought that we've seen in California over the last decade is the worst on record as far back as they can go, at least 1,200 years. And so 
the drought we're now facing, the dryness we're now facing is outside of the range of the natural variability that we've seen uh, over the past thousand years. And in this case, it's sort of a double whammy. Climate change, in a sense, might be pushing us towards a state that's sort of like that La Nina uh, state in the tropical Pacific that leads to worse drought in California. But that's on top of an overall warming and drying associated with climate change. So climate change might be giving us a double whammy that means even drier conditions out west than our climate models have predicted. Another example of where uncertainty isn't our friend. In some respects, the changes that we're seeing are greater um, and are happening faster than our climate models predicted. Yeah, not not good news. We're talking with Dr. Michael Mann, uh, his most recent book, The New Climate Wars. Uh, MichaelMann.net, his website, and Michael E. Mann on Twitter. Uh, the uh, Dr. Mann, the 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 source of this, the cause of all this, I, I, you know, there, there's an absolute scientific consensus that it has to do with burning fossil fuels, and it's exacerbated by a few other chemicals, but you know, principally carbon carbon-based fuels. Is the, in, as, a, as a climate scientist, when you look at some of the proposals that are being put forward right now by the Biden administration for rebuilding American infrastructure, given that about half of all our carbon emissions in this country come from cars, about another quarter of them from houses, please correct me if I have any of those numbers wrong, um, I, not just houses and buildings, let's say, um, that, you know, our are we going in the right direction? Are we doing anything close to enough? Do you have thoughts on this, uh, you know, in the in the context of science as opposed to politics? Yeah. yeah, and so what the science tells us is that it is still possible to avert the worst impacts of climate change. We are not going to avert all damaging and dangerous climate change impacts because they're already here. On the West Coast, they're here. If you're Puerto Rico, they're here. The Gulf Coast that had a record hurricane season last year, uh, Australia, where I was on sabbatical a year ago, um, all around the world, we are seeing dangerous climate change impacts. And so that's already baked in. The question is, how bad are we willing to let it get? And if we act boldly and dramatically, and we bring carbon emissions down by a factor of two within the next decade, which is doable with the right incentives, we can avert the worst impacts of climate change. Now, the, the Biden plan um, is a bold plan. It's the boldest plan that we've seen by any American president so far, even more so than Barack Obama. And it comes about as close as you can come to what we might think of as the Green New Deal through executive actions alone. And obviously, to really implement a, a Green New Deal, we're going to need legislation. And so here, the good news is we've got an executive branch that's acting, that's come forward with a bold range of proposals that really does address those carbon emissions you're talking about. 70% of our carbon emissions comes from the burning of fossil fuels for energy, for transportation, uh, for buildings. And, and, and these proposals really address that. And they also address carbon emissions in the land use sector, in the forestry sector, in the agriculture sector. So it's really a cross government approach and it's a bold approach but we need to codify that in legislation because we've learned that uh you know live by executive actions die by executive action anything that is passed by this administration could be undone by the next administration if um, they're no longer as um, climate friendly if instead uh, we get another administration like the trump administration that's simply doing the bidding of fossil the fossil fuel industry we need to make sure we get legislation that 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 really codifies policies that you know incentivize renewable energy provide subsidies for renewable energy block new uh, fossil fuel infrastructure uh, uh, carbon pricing that's done in a just manner um that's, uh, that 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 is uh, progressive rather than regressive is one of the approaches that I think is important too. This is great, great stuff. Dr. Michael Mann, thank you so much for dropping by and informing us all today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Always a pleasure. Yeah, indeed. It, it truly is. Uh, it's great talking with you. And, and, I, and I know that the people who are listening value this information.